Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we are going to be doing a full face of new affordable makeup. The majority of the items I'm featuring today are from PR. I've been wanting to dig through all of the new affordable makeup. You guys know, primarily a luxury high-end channel here, but nothing makes me more happy than to be able to find affordable products that work just as great as my high-end favorites and I'm not afraid to share that with you. So main focus of today, I got this really chic package from e.l.f. for their Jen Atkins collection. So I've been dying to play with this. I've just had so much going on. Finally get to dig into that and then just some accompanying pieces. I have some new Milani items, some new ColourPop items, Revlon, um, and a few other things. So let's get into it. Do the huge, put a headband on, get uncomfortably close to my face. We're gonna start off with priming our face. Now I have two items from Milani. Milani sent me this, like honestly, amazing PR package that I feel like I don't deserve. <laughs> but I have a lot of prepping products that I chose to play with. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna dig into this avocado butter lip mask. I was intrigued because you see Jazz said it reminded her of the Laneige and I love the Laneige and it's definitely very similar. It's a little bit thicker. I feel like the Laneige is a little bit thinner and it spreads a little bit easier, mm, but it like tastes and smells really good. I think I like this so far. <laughs> now I want to try out this Milani Cherry Radiance Oil. So this is a lightweight oil that's supposed to nourish and brighten skin for a radiant glow. Now this says to apply two to four drops onto clean skin used every morning and evening. So it's more so a skincare product, but let's try it out. This bottle is absolutely to die for. It feels, you know, not super luxe by any means, but it feels really nice for a drugstore product. I'm just gonna put it all over my skin. Now it does have a cherry fragrance to it. So if you're sensitive to fragrance, so you're not a big fan this might not be for you but it feels nice going onto my skin um, but it definitely has a pretty strong fragrance okay last Milani product but this is going to be our primer for today this is the peach glass skin primer with peach extract mm, I love the way this feels it feels really hydrating and you can see it does give a nice glowy finish to the skin and I feel like I didn't need to apply too much product. Mm, I really, really like this. I mean, so far from what I can tell, it feels really nice. This also has a slight peachy fragrance to it, but it's not overwhelming. I feel like that cherry oil was much stronger, but so far I really like the priming products I've tried from Milani, like everything from the lip mask to the oil to the primer, because I like the fruity scents, I'm not gonna lie. Really excited about that. I didn't have a super new drugstore foundation. A while back, Revlon sent over their Color Stay Light Cover Foundation. Now I have the shade buff and this is way too light on me and honestly I've tried this a couple times I don't really like it it definitely emphasizes dry patches on your skin so I, that's why I really prep my skin today I'm also going to mix some of the physician's formula butter believe it foundation and concealer this is in the shade fair to light this foundation runs a lot darker than you think I'm not fair to light and this is a good match for me this guy's a little bit too thick for my preferences so both of these I've tried before they aren't brand new but they're new enough and my face is gonna be really light today as you oh my goodness <laughs> mm. I just didn't have another affordable foundation that matched my skin tone, so I'm sorry. The Physician's Formula is definitely a better match, but I guess it's still a bit light for me. I swore it wasn't. I think it oxidizes. Oh, but blended in, it doesn't look that bad. You know what? These two actually are feeding off of each other well. Well, I'm just gonna let the record stand that I do not like the Revlon foundation alone because I really felt like it emphasized the dry patches on my skin and it also just had a generally uneven coverage. And I definitely liked the Physician's Formula more, but I thought it looked a little bit thick on my skin. But the two mixed together are kind of everything I don't like about them are fixing each other because I know that Physicians Formula is allowing for more even coverage and the Revlon is lightening up 
the thickness of the physician's formula because all in all my skin looks nice right now as you can see the both of them mixed together it still gives a pretty light coverage you can see my skin through but i am more than okay with that especially for the summer so these two mix together if you happen to have both i mean i definitely think you need to mix the revlon foundation if you picked it up for me i just wasn't that big of a fan of it but i don't know just thought I'd share that. And then there also have been no new concealers to come out that I've tried recently. So Koki sent me a package, so I have a couple items to put on today. So this is the Koki Be Bright Illuminating Concealer. So this isn't new by any means. It's more new to me. These... <laughs> Again, this is pretty light. This is a shade light, but good thing everything else on my skin is light. I've used this concealer a couple times and I actually really like it. I think it's nice. It's um, kind of a middle of the road concealer. You know, it doesn't provide full, full coverage, but it gives more than a light coverage. It spreads beautifully and it wears pretty good as well. So I've been enjoying this concealer and I'm definitely more interested to try a few more things from Koki. I'm gonna put just a little bit more right here in this area. Area. And I guess looking, it is so much lighter. So let me put some in the center of my face that it makes everything look just a little bit more even. <laughs> So if you have a really light concealer, uh, you can make it blend into the skin more just by applying that color to the center parts of the face so that it looks more cohesive instead of just having super bright under eyes. You can see that how that made everything look better. Okay, last cokey thing I'm going to try out their translucent setting powder. This I have not tried. So we're going to try it out. I might dislike it. I've tried so many different powders lately i'm gonna be extra picky because there have been some really great high-end powders that have come out recently i'm gonna use a sponge i don't normally apply my powder like this but i just feel like it today i don't know i'm not applying any creams to my face so i'm just gonna pack the powder where i need it and then the forehead's gonna be the last spot. Call me crazy, but my complexion looks really nice today. Actually, no, the mirror's too far. <laughs> hold on, hold on, let me get a closer look. Mm, okay, close up, it's not as perfect as I thought it was from afar. Uh, yeah, definitely some uneven coverage on the cheek. Just like I said, the Revlon did. And a touch dry, just a touch, nothing crazy. Like, I feel like that dryness will go away when I wear it out and, you know, my oils come through. But okay, I still stand by that Revlon applies patchy. It does. That's definitely the Revlon. Okay, let's move on to eyebrows. I got a very kind package of some new eyebrow products from ColourPop. So they have these pencils. Let's see. I've never tried the Precision Brow Pencil from ColourPop. So we'll try that because I'm familiar with their Brow Boss Pencil, but not their Precision Brow Pencil. Are these the same though? Um, what's the difference between the two? Are they different? I use the Brow Boss. That's a good one. Okay, yes. The Precision Brow is different. It's, I think, Brow Boss and then Precision Brow. Well, since I've never tried the Precision Brow, I guess we'll do that. They sent me the color Banging Brunette, which I don't think is my, a good color for me, but that's okay. Oof, that's really creamy. Like, not in a good way. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward through this. Catch on the flip side. All right, guys, I'm back to report that I'm not loving how my makeup looks thus far. The skin looks really dry up close. I didn't think it looked bad when my mirror was far away from me. Then I got up close and I was like, oof, the Revlon. I know it's that Revlon making it look dry and uneven. The eyebrow pencil is a bit too creamy for me. I swear my other brow boss from ColourPop the dryer. I don't know if it's because it's older or if the precision brow pencil is just creamier, but I just don't prefer a creamy brow pencil. It applies hair like strokes really nice but yeah just I don't know and I know my brows are distant relatives we're just not going to acknowledge that actually yeah we are I want to try the newest product from ColourPop these are the feather effect styling waxes so they sent me uh one that's in tinted it's the brown one and they sent the clear one I'm just gonna try the clear one since I do not want my brows to get any darker I typically prefer a lighter brow pencil and we also have a spoolie provided for us so I don't I have not watched any tutorials on this yes so we do need a drop of setting mist or water so in the elf 
and Jen Atkins collection. There's a mist. So let's use that. Here's what it looks like, by the way. It's like totally dry. It definitely needs water. Oh, this is. Oh, oh, elf. This mister is phenomenal. By the way, this definitely has like a coconutty scent to it. Probably should have done that after I did my bronzer, but okay, that's fine. Okay, so I sprayed it. Do I do it? What do I do? Activate the formula, then using the brow brush, activate the brows in circular motions to create brow-like texture. Now this brush is not bent enough for me. That's fine. Okay, so I'm doing circular motions. Um, I picked up some of the gel. I'm gonna clean all this up with concealer, by the way. Brow pencil was just too creamy. It's making a mess. <laughs> I'm gonna try more water. I think I need more. And if you watch my channel, you know I'm not a big fan of a feather brow effect. Guys, look at me right now. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> <sighs> I'm not cool enough to look like this. And then, you know, you take like the paddle. Whoo! Okay, that actually did stick my brows up and you can see this brush is like gross now. I mean, they're up. Okay, so I mean this brow thing worked if you don't want to spend the money on the ABH one. I like the ABH one better because you don't have to activate it with water. I've never tried the Patrick Ta one, but it worked. It's just not the kind of product I typically use, but it worked. Oh my gosh, you guys, I might just have feather brows today because, whew. Okay, now if you're wondering how we're gonna fix this mess, we're gonna take some foundation. I'm using the Physician's Formula. I'm using this old ABH brush. It's kind of like a paddle brush. Get just a little bit on your brush. We gotta do some of my leaves. Ugh. And this is instantly just gonna clean up everything. I might go around the top too, so. I'll be back momentarily. Okay, so see, a little bit of concealer. We're looking better now. I can, I can work with this. All right, we're gonna dig now into the Elf and Jen Atkin collection. As you saw, we just did the spray. Spray is cool. But tell me how chic this packaging is, everything about it. So we're gonna play with some of the items in here. I have been dying to try this stuff you guys i just haven't been able to so here we are so thank you so much elf for sending this my way because i'm excited oh okay this whole time i thought they only sent me the dark palette and i was like mm, i'm gonna have to make that work but i just realized they sent me both it was just hiding underneath but i can't get it out so <laughs> hold on oh my god Okay, so there are two shades to this. Love the clear acrylic packaging. So this is the lighter of the two palettes, and this is the darker of the two palettes. Let me show you. Obviously, I'm going towards the light one. I think I might not. I don't want to touch the dark one. I think I want to give that one away. Let's use the light one because I'm light today. <laughs> um, let me get a bronzer brush. Do I want to swatch these first? Let's do a quick swatch. Ooh, these feel so creamy. So here's what the face products look like. They look pretty simple, nothing crazy. The shadows feel really smooth. They aren't buttery smooth, but, and, but they don't have any fallout. Look at these, just really basic, awesome colors that are great for every day. Let's start off with the bronzer. That looks really pretty. I mean, e.l.f. kills it with their affordable products. I always try e.l.f. products, but I'm always so shocked at how well they work. I mean, that's a good bronzer for me. Looks nice. I wish my base looked better, but it looks nice. All right, let's do the blush now. Now these all have a pretty flat finish to them. This blush is right up my alley. Pretty simple, just like a great everyday pink. Very healthy looking. Then let's try out the highlight. The highlight looks like it could be a bit dark on me. Let's find out. Oh no, it has a pretty nice glow. There's not much of a cast. Doesn't it look like it's dark? I guess it's not by swatch either. That's pretty. I mean, you can't beat it for the price, guys. Look at that. Elf is one of those brands that just makes me question why I purchase so much iron and luxury makeup sometimes because they really do kill it with their quality. Okay, I'm gonna put on an eye base. I'm just gonna use some, I always do this. Okay, so I'm gonna put on an eye base. 
which is just gonna be foundation, and then we'll be back to play with that. Okay, primer is down. It's time to go in on the eyeshadows. We're gonna start off with the tan shade right, oh gosh, I'm making a mess. We're gonna start off with the tan shade right here, and I have to say, as I'm holding this palette, the quality of the packaging is really sturdy. You know how, you know, sometimes plastic packaging in drugstore, it feels like plastic, it feels really cheap. This feels like a nice acrylic component. Really high quality, guys. You see that added just a touch of depth. We're just gonna build right on up. Okay, Elf, you guys see how great these mats are blending? Wow. Don't forget to get down here. Okay, I'm gonna take a smaller brush. I'm gonna go into this more cooler color. This is a great contour color. You can also use this on your face, especially if, more, if you have more of like a medium complexion. Guys, I'm really impressed with how this is applying. I'm gonna take some of the lightest shade. We're gonna apply this all over the lid. Like that. <sighs> Guys, I'm really impressed. Okay, so also in the collection, there are two eyeliners. They're called Zero Effort Liners. And it's interesting, it's like a square packaging. So cute. All right, I'm gonna line my eyes and then we're gonna go back into the palette for the deepest shade. Applied with ease. Okay, and then let's see. So not the, oh my gosh, do you see this actually ended up breaking? It's creamy, but it's really thick. So that's kind of not the best feeling. So I'm gonna take a little smudger brush from Refer. This is the number 29. This is a liner that definitely needs smudged because it's so thick, like it spreads easily, but it's hard to spread in the pencil form. You almost need to just put it on and then you'll see how far it spreads. So I don't know that this is gonna set because it's so malleable. I don't love this. I don't love a formula like this. I think this is better in the waterline. It's not the most user-friendly. And there's also a, I guess this is navy? No, I just used the brown one. <laughs> and the other color is a black one, but I'm using the brown one. We're not done yet. I'm gonna take the deepest color now and we're gonna create a smoky eye. Are you just blending this right out with the eyeliner. So this is going to help fuse that waterline color into the lower lash line. You see how that made the whole look like sexy and smoky and I'm gonna take just a little bit. Hmm, how do I wanna do this? I was gonna put some like right here. Just a little bit, just like that. Then we'll blend it. Okay, I'm gonna take some of the brown shade and I'm gonna put it right on top of that liner. Okay, we're gonna take some of the highlighter, pop that right here. The inner corner to open up the eye. Okay, you guys, this palette, it is the bomb. It is so good. It definitely obviously has the most basic colors that you probably don't need, but if you need <laughs> these colors, it's super bomb. Okay, so I have a new mascara. This was sent to me from Maybelline. This is the Falsies Lash Lift Mascara. So let's open her up. So this is what the wand looks like. She's pretty thick. So I do believe this is a new mascara from Maybelline. Let's just find out what it's all about. It says it's a double curved brush, dramatic length, volume, and lift. So let's see. The brush is kind of fat, and you guys know I don't have the longest lower lashes, so I'm having trouble depositing the product on my lower lashes. And also, I don't ever really fully judge a mascara based on first use, just because I like a more dry formula. But here's what the first coat looks like on eye. Not very thickening. It does add some length, but it's not thickening. Okay, this mascara builds really nice. Look how much length I'm getting. Wow, and I do feel like I'm getting a lift too. Hmm, Maybelline. So this is with a second coat. <laughs> oh, okay, Maybelline. Let me keep building. Wow. 
Okay, I'm super impressed with the length that this gave me. Now, it didn't give a ton of thickness and volume to my lashes, but it gave just enough to counteract the length where it doesn't look bad. Now, I was gonna use these new lashes from Salon Perfect. So Salon Perfect came out with a butterfly collection and I was debating between trying 693 and 691, but I actually think I'm gonna forego lashes because I really like this mascara. Oh my, this is so many good fun. Oh gosh, I gotta fight with this Jen Atkins package again to get the rest of the products out. Just really quickly, we're not gonna try this today, but this is really cool. This is a hair and brow pomade. You can see there's like a brush inside. So this you can use to tame the flyaways or for your eyebrows. Today's not the day that I can use it just because my hair doesn't need it, nor do my eyebrows. Everything about this collection though, I'm in love with. This is one of my favorite collections from e.l.f. Okay guys, so last product from the e.l.f. and Jen Atkins. Atkins collection. These are lip liner and lipstick duos. They look really awesome. I think I'm doing bring it on brown. Let me swatch the colors for you because they look so stunning. So here's what the packaging looks like by the way. Really clean, very simple. So this first one is bring it on brown, which is right here. That's the one I think I'm going for today. This next one is red. How cool. This is ready to go. So this has a bit of a brighter almost oranginess to it. Very cool. Okay, and the last one is self-made pink. That looks like it would be a really nice everyday nudie color. I think just with the eye look that I have on now, I wanna stick pretty brown. I can see this not being that great because it is a thicker product and you can't sharpen it and I like a really sharp lip liner, but it is more of a creamy consistency so you can put it all over the lips and it will work great as a lipstick. And we're putting on the lipstick side. Now this side is a little bit rough. It's a bit dry. It's not as creamy as the lip liner. I think I'd almost prefer to put the lip liner side all over my lips as opposed to the lipstick side. You can see my lips look kinda dry, but the colors super pretty, oh my. So here's my two cents on these lip products. They are such pretty colors. The colors that Jen chose, absolutely beautiful. The only thing that I'm not so crazy about is the lipstick side is a bit drying, so make sure you prep your lips or just put a gloss over top. So I'm gonna take a moment, get myself together, and then we'll go over my final thoughts of everything that I tried today. All right, you guys, I have to say, I'm really impressed with some of the products that I tried. So we'll start off with the Milani stuff that we began with. So I really did enjoy the Milani Avocado Butter Lip Mask. If you have been interested in trying the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, this is definitely, I think, a great dupe. There definitely are differences. They aren't the exact same, but obviously, if you don't want to spend the money on the Laneige. I really like this Milani one and the scent, everything really great. The Radiance Oil is definitely not going to be for everybody. I'm not super impressed with it. I just kind of put it on. I can't really tell you much about it right now. It smells really great, but that's also kind of a turnoff for some people. So I like it. I don't love it. It's nothing remarkable that I tried today. I know my hair, sorry, I don't know what to do with, <laughs> with this. I did not style it. I put it in a braid the last two days. So it's like struggling to figure out what to do. Anyway, I did, however, really like the Glass Skin Primer from Milani. I feel like it was very moisturizing. It applied a nice glow to the skin. I'm finding that Milani does a phenomenal job with their primers, so I'm really into this. Unfortunately, neither foundation really does it for me, particularly the Revlon Color Stay Light Cover Foundation. This is not good at all. I don't like the way it makes my skin look. I don't like the way that it applies. It's just kind of a dud for me. The Physicians Formula Butter Believe It is better. In the times that I've worn it, I've never really been super in love with it. So I don't really recommend this from the drugstore either. The Koki products that I tried today, I really enjoy. I think this is a very nice and solid concealer from the drugstore. Same with the powder. I don't think the powder is bad at all. I'm not sure if it gives any flashback or not, but I do feel like it smoothed the skin pretty nice. So both of the Koki products that I tried, I'm pretty impressed with. As far as the ColourPop brow products, I'm a brow boss girl. The Ultra Precision Brow Pencil was too creamy for me. I'm also not the biggest fan of the color, uh, but that's nothing really. I just think it, it blends too much. It just makes a mess on my eyebrow. Feather Effect Styling Wax is just not a product for me, just because I don't really do stuff like this to my brows, but it works. And I prefer the ABH, but I think this is a really nice alternative if you can't
can't pick up the ABH. I mean, it worked. My brows, they feel a little bit sticky, but they're sticking. So if you like that feather effect, this is a really nice product and it's very affordable. So ColourPop, I think, did a good job with this. I don't think you need to get a colored one, even if your eyebrows are very dark, because that no light film deposited from the clear one. Or if you want, you can get the darker one, but you don't need both. The Jen Atkin collection is probably my favorite collection that e.l.f. has ever come out with. My favorite part of today's video. The Let's Elfing Do This palette, amazing in every which way. I'm so impressed with this. Obviously, it's nothing really exciting, but this whole collection was about simplicity, everyday makeup, having all you need in one. I think the packaging feels very high quality. I love a clear packaging, and the colors worked really well for my skin tone, and you saw me apply them. I had zero issues. They blended well. They built up well. So impressed with this palette. Highly recommend it. The face mist, I mean, I just briefly use it, but it's an incredible mist. It does have that scent to it. I don't know if it really does anything, but you're gonna like the mist that it gives you. I didn't get to try the brow pomade. The Zero Effort Liner, I think I like better as a waterline liner. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but it was a little bit messy on my upper lash line. I just kind of made a wing and then I had to blend it all the way in. It's just too creamy for me, believe it or not. It's just so creamy that it can't even hold itself on the pencil. So um, definitely great if you love smudgy liner. I love the square packaging of this as well. It's just so pretty, but it's not my favorite pencil. And the lip products are a bit dry. The colors are really, really nice and I like the lip liners the lipstick side to kind of dry but for the price I really can't complain you know I think the colors are so good and you can adjust with a really nice lip mask and then some lip gloss on top because these are great for on the go and just having a lot of options so I still really enjoy these and then the last new product is this Maybelline the falsies lash lift very impressed for first use and I can only imagine it's going to get better the more that I use it but first impressions I mean I am foregoing falsies which I never do because I would just really like it with this look so anyways overall I would say with the exception of complexion my whole face I love this look I love the simplicity I love the quality of the products that I tried out and I'm really excited if you're gonna get one thing I mean my must-haves definitely the palette from elf and Jen Atkin these colors are so awesome the mascara is worth trying and I really liked the Milani products. These are probably my top four products in this video. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed getting ready with me. I hope you got excited to try some new affordable products. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.